Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Oh
filled with your glory. We bind the forces of evil that no one can encamp upon our minds that we will not receive this word today. We thank you, God. We give you ourselves. We give you glory, honor, and praise. It's in the name of Jesus. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we ask it all. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. When I was a little girl, raised up in Urbana, Ohio, our family lived across the street from the church. And in the home of Viola Cheers Bowser, attendance in worship was the law. If you didn't go to church, you couldn't go anywhere else. But I used to hear the old deacon sing this song, a charge to keep our hands, a God to glorify, and every dying soul to save and, and fit it for the sky. Here's the theme right here. To serve this president, my calling to fulfill. And the closing line says, and may it all my powers endure to do. That's why we're here today. Amen. Amen. We are here because God has called us for a divine purpose. Amen. Everyone who's sitting here today is on an assignment from God. Yes. This is a Kairos moment, and a Kairos moment is the moment that God himself assigns to the people who are on this earth. If you look at the world today, the world today is not pleasing in the sight of God. It is not on earth as it is in heaven. And if you don't believe me, I want to give you some scripture taken from 2 Timothy, the third chapter, that is describing the world in which we live today. And then if you pay attention to the news, if you pay attention to the movement of, of the earth challenges, the storms, the hurricanes, the fires, the mudslides, uh, the tsunamis, and all of this stuff, God is speaking, trying to get our attention to say it is not as I had planned or ordained for it to be. But God is saying that I have an assignment for each of you, we are not here just to be peddling in the water. Amen. God has an assignment yeah. for you. Yeah. But this is what we're dealing with over in uh, 2 Timothy, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. It said, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, uh -huh. boasters, proud, uh -huh. blasphemers, yeah. disobedient to parents, mm. uh -huh. unthankful, uh -huh. unholy, right. unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, uh, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, Haughty, listen to this, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. I don't know what your Bible says, but my Bible says from such, turn away. So here's the assignment. And if you just go right over to the next chapter, chapter 4 in 2 Timothy, on this missionary Sunday, because we are called to be on assignment from God, and the challenge that we are we we are faced today is that many of us have served from our childhood, served from our uh, uh, young adulthood, served from our adulthood, and by the time we get to be seniors, uh, we want to lay it down and say, "I have served my time. I've done everything I need to do," and we want to turn it over to somebody else, but the Word of God said, not so. The Word of God, if you would go over to Psalm 92, that he tells the older people that I will daily 
pour into you fresh oil yeah. that you will be full of sap and green yeah. that the wisdom that you have that you have gained through all of your years is that which is needed right now to right. turn this world back around it is our responsibility to teach the younger people what is good the older women and the older men yeah. the older men have to take the younger boys because I'm a single parent of a one son and there are certain aspects in a man's life that a woman can't touch. It's going to take a man to raise a man. But it's going to take a woman to raise a man. Second Timothy 4. Here's the response to 2 Timothy 3. It says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one who will be the judge of the living and the dead. Might I say that some of us who are right here today are walking around as the living dead. We don't have enough Holy Ghost in us. We don't have enough Spirit of God in us that we will be able to take the challenges of this world to make a difference in, our, in the life of this land. And so it says, at the appearing of the kingdom. See, we're, we ought to be facing ourselves as kingdom builders. On, so here we go in verse 2. Preach the word. This is your assignment. Be ready. In season and out of season. Amen. Convince. Rebuke. Exhort. With all long suffering and with teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Amen. Uh huh. That for, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears and uh, they desire, uh, they will heap up for themselves uh, teachers, people they want to hear from, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to false teaching or fables or stories. But, does your Bible say but in verse 5? Amen. You be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. I will talk to you just a little while on the topic of a call, a, a, a divine call to serve. Right. A divine call to serve. You see, we're living in an age today where people have a reason to complain about anything and everything. Amen. And we do. Yeah. We're complaining about the weather. We're complaining about our children. All right. We're complaining about gas prices. Uh -huh. We're complaining about house foreclosures. We're complaining about this, uh, the, the prices of insurance and gas and everything going up and rarely does it come down. Uh -huh. We're complaining about so many things and we are complaining about the things that we don't have rather than giving thanks to God for the things that we do have. I don't know about you, but I'm happy just to be in my right mind. I'm happy to have good health. I'm happy even with a new hip to be Right through the 
text. And it tells us that we are on assignment. We have to preach the word. It doesn't mean that you stand up here like I am right now and look through the scriptures and tell somebody what thus saith the Lord. When we preach the word, we become a witness to what God has already done for us. And I can't tell you enough that God has already blessed you 10,000 times before you walked out of the door today. He watched over you while you slept. He kept blood running through your veins. He let you get up and dress yourself. He didn't take your shoes and put them on your head. Yeah. 
decision to tie the knot rather than shack it. All right. All right. And they were saying, well, they have issues. I got shoes. You got shoes. All God's children got issues. Everybody sitting in here has got one thing or another. And we as uh, representatives of God call ourselves Christians. We ought not be complaining about somebody else's faults because all of us have some faults. Experiences in your life 
are not just for you. Come on, God. But they're for you to tell somebody how you made it over. Yeah. When uh, you get the, the senior stage of your life, yeah. you don't just sit still and do nothing, yeah. but you gather the young people around uh. and you tell them how you made it through when you didn't have enough money to pay your bills yeah. and how you made it through uh. when you were sick and thought you wouldn't get well. How you made it through when you felt that you were all alone and as soon as you thought you were all alone, God sent somebody to pick you up and to pour into you the presence and the power of God. Yes. Little girl sat up here and said, rebuke the devil. Come on, God. And he will free you. You got to speak up. I don't say nothing, you know, because these kids are just uh -huh. You don't know if they're packing or not. Uh -huh. <laughs> you have to be careful. You have to be wise. But the Bible says rebuke. And then it says to exhort. That word means to encourage. I had a girlfriend of mine who was raised by her grandmother. And when she would do something that was right, she would always say, no, baby. See, there's a way you can say it. When you say it as you care in love, it is more readily received. I don't know where all my children went, but we need to learn how to communicate with our children. We were back there in the room talking about technology. I try to be current. Because I don't want to be left behind. <laughs> but if we're going to communicate with our young people, we got to communicate with the weapons and the tools that they understand. Right. And I know it's hard to learn how to text. Uh -huh. But we better learn how to text in order to reach our children and then to understand what they say. <laughs> Because uh, these children will be texting us. You'll text them and they'll text you back saying L-O-L. -L. Uh, that, that means laugh out loud, but you don't know what they're really laughing about or if they are really laughing. And so you've got to be able to have a response. And if you're not working in the avenue in which they understand, they are not going to hear us. Yeah. Uh, you got to learn some of these acronyms that are being texted. Now, I'm still back in the days, I still have 45.
in time. Right. Some of us are not moving forward. Well, we're not moving backwards. We're just stuck. And some of us need to be pushed. Yeah. Others need to be pulled. Yeah. And others need a little kick. Yeah. So that they can, it ought to be that we are moving forward. Yeah. Not turning back, moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you my past. It says that you got to know for the time will come when you will when they will not endure sound doctrine. Amen. See, a lot of people don't know who Paul is, mm -hmm. let alone what Paul said. Well. A lot of people don't know the scriptures, and they have so many uh, 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 versions of the Bible. Uh, I, I, I'm not upset about that, but you do need to have the familiar sound of the word of God. So that when somebody says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You gotta be able to recognize that when you're sick, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. You gotta know that Bible says that lo, I'll be with you always. And even until the end of the age, you got to know the sound of the word. But when they change the word, it speaks to you. But that ought to speak to you in your time of study. But when we get here and we are speaking the word of God, somebody ought to be able to lift up holy hands. The one that says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. The one that says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Forget not all of his benefits, who heals all our diseases, forgives all our sins, crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Morning by morning, we ought to get new mercies. Because we know what time it is. And then, when you know what time it is, when you look around at the sign of the times, and you look at the news report and you've heard and seen the absolute worst thing that could ever happen and when you hear about children killing their parents parents killing their children all kinds of trouble going on in the land and when you think you've heard the worst thing you turn on the news the next day and something else happens that worse than what's happened yesterday. So we have to be, uh, be about the business of responding to this charge, the key that we have. It is all about the God that we glorify. Every dying soul of souls are dying on this earth and we're sitting here we're plipping our thumbs and watching and saying nothing is time. It says you gotta know what time it is because they're not going to endure this old, old tradition. Uh, I, I'm thankful for my mother yeah. who taught me how to live, how to love, how to respect. How, she taught me everything. That which I learned in seminary, my mother had already taught me at home. It had a different name for it. But, but it was all And it's in season and out of season. And so the children don't want to hear. You can't wear pants to church. It ain't going to stop you from getting in the kingdom. I heard a pastor say, I don't like uh, all these tattoos. Well, it's not going to stop them from getting in the kingdom. The Bible does speak to not mar your body. But, it, 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 you know, we, we, if we don't agree with it, we just don't agree with it, but guess what? They're gonna do it anyhow. And so we have to, we have to learn to look beyond what we see to the very essence of that being. That deep down in each individual, there's the goodness of the Lord. Bishop Cornelius Henderson said, "There's some good in everybody." He said, "A clock that doesn't work is right two times a day." And so you got to know. So the Bible says that if we don't 
learn how to connect. It says that they will turn their from their teaching uh, to itching ears. What does that mean, Pastor? It means tell me something to make me feel good no matter how bad I've done. Right? Just, just, just make me feel good. I'm coming to church and make me feel good. Then I go home and say, I went to church. There ain't no change taking place. If you don't challenge them to look down within themselves and see that the things that are not right do not honor God to cause them to look. We don't want to make you feel bad, but if what I am saying steps on your toes, snatch them back, say out, and look within yourself and say, God, help me to change. Because otherwise, they're going to turn from the truth and be turned in to fables, stories, without a good ending. And then, as I prepare to take my seat, it says that you are to be watchful in all things. You got to pay attention to what's going on around you. Women, the new thing is women who are riding single in a pretty car. And a young brother, or maybe an old man, I don't know. <laughs> but they will come after you yeah. because there's the wickedness of the spirit. The Bible says the Satan is going to and fro, right. seeking whom he may yeah. devour. Right. If you are not paying attention to what's going on, you can be tricked, yeah. you can be duped, you right. can be fooled, and you look up. And you be as as some of these young girls are now out here dancing on the pole, making money. They say they're making money. Goes. Come, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. Uh, uh, this underground human trafficking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a serious problem. Yeah. 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 It's a serious problem. Yeah. 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 And, and, and the people who are participating in it are our higher thoughts. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Come on. And so they get these young, and, and, and I was in a church, I'm not going to tell you where I was, and I was going to bring the information there, and, and they said, oh, that doesn't happen out here. Yeah. It's a nice little town. That's where the enemy yeah. comes. Yeah. Because the enemy knows yeah. that you're not paying attention. Yeah. And so you have to teach our children what's right early in life, and it's never too soon. You can even be talking to them while they are in your womb, so that they will know, and you have to be careful that you do not allow them, and then mothers, if a daughter comes to you and says, somebody touched me wrong, listen to me. Pay attention to what you say. You may not know how to handle it, but at least embrace the child uh -huh. and give that child the support and right. encouragement that she needs because it may uh, uh, mess her up for life. But guess what? It happens to young boys too. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm talking real stuff, but that's the time of the day. That's the time the day. Right. Yeah. we live. You see, we, we're, we're so busy uh, uh, trying to to, to, to scratch the itch of ears uh -huh. mm -hmm. that we're not telling the truth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, I, and the Bible says in the end that we will have to what? Give it a God. Yeah. Why? When you get to the why did you not tell that young child uh -huh. that they were traveling wrong? Why did you not straighten out that brother when he wasn't doing right? Mm -hmm. Well, God, God don't want him well. Yeah. He's just going to say, I, 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 I never knew you. Mm -hmm. That's what he's going to say. So yeah. as I close, uh, the last uh, verse or line of that song that, that uh, when we talk about a charge to keep our have, it says, Oh, may it all <laughs> my powers endure. I'm talking about all my power. Yeah. What kind of power do you have? I, I'm here to tell you, church, that you have a Holy Ghost power. You have the kind of power that you can speak life to death. You have the kind of power that you can speak healing to sickness. God wants all of us to be healed. He wants us to be well. You have the kind of power that raised Jesus.
Of the blood. Amen. It reaches yes. to the 